This is the product manager of Toon Boom Animation, and I'd like to present you today Storyboard Pro. Storyboard Pro is laid out in a similar way to how you would normally work on paper. So you can see, for example, um, a horizontal layout here where you have the thumbnail drawing on the top and you have caption information on the bottom. And captions are simply a way of organizing information in your project. Captions are completely customizable. You can rename, add, delete these captions to organize whatever information you want to keep track of in your project. Another thing most people like to do when they're working with the project is they like to import a script in to work with. And if you are using a professional script writing software like Final Draft, we do have the ability here to import a script from Final Draft and to use the tagging to auto-populate some of the elements in your project. But if you're not working with Final Draft, you can always import a plain text script or you can copy and paste from Word or from a PDF document so that you can get your script into the files and then work with the script. And once the script is laid out into the script window here, it's very simple to select some text and simply drag and drop the text into the elements or the captions on the left hand side in order to quickly organize information in your project. Storyboard Pro offers a full set of comprehensive drawing tools that allow you to do things like rotate your workspace. Um, you can draw with a full set of either vector tools or um, bitmap style, Photoshop style tools depending on the style that you're looking for. So for example, if I use a bitmap style layer here, then I can draw with different types of textures like I can draw with a marker and I can really build up on the strokes. Um, or I can choose to draw with more of a vector style brush and then this allows you to do things like build up textures on top of itself and also manipulate the lines and move the lines around after you draw them. So see how for example you can make use of the bitmap drawing tools to do a drawing that has a lot of depth, that has a lot of variation in tone and color and you can get this very nice look at the end of the day. Even with bitmap style brushes, we do also have the ability to draw with a property that we call Draw Behind. And what Draw Behind lets us do is when this property is activated, we can effectively white out the character from underneath to prevent um, us from being able to see any background elements that might be beneath that um, character. So when I first draw the stroke, it appears in front of the character and then as I let go of the mouse, it will then go behind the character. As you can see, as I'm drawing, I do also have the ability to work with a layer-based system in here where you can keep track of the different layers so that you can have different elements like different trees and background elements, for example, on different layers. And then whichever layer you're working on will show up in front of all the other layers so that you can draw more easily on that layer as you're drawing. Storyboard Pro does also have a built-in library functionality where you can save drawings for reuse if you're going to reuse those drawings on multiple different panels. For example, in this panel I have quite a few different layers there for my background. So I can select just the layers that I'm interested in or I can select the entire panel and I can drag and drop it into my library. So now that this element is saved in the library, I can go to a new panel and I can drag and drop the element into the panel when I need to so that I can access that drawing quickly. In addition to drawing tools, Storyboard Pro is fully equipped with animatic tools as well. What this means is that you could even take a drawing layer, for example my character layer here, and I can set a first frame for him to start off the edge of the frame, and I can set a last frame for him to come into the frame, and as I play through the timeline on this panel now, I see my character entering the frame. In addition to being able to do layer moves like this, we can also do camera moves. So if I take my camera tool, I can put keyframes on this camera. Let's say, for example, if I want to put a keyframe at the beginning and at the end of the panel, then I could do something like I could pan from the top down. Now if I play through this, we see it panning and the character entering this frame. I could do a zoom. I could do any kind of camera move that I like to. I can even have an extra keyframe or as many keyframes as I want to on this camera move so that I can have this, for example, panning down and then zooming over. So if I'd like to copy this keyframe, I can paste it on the other one. 
and then I can use this last keyframe now, the red one, to zoom in on my character and see the final look on this frame now as it first zooms down or pans down and then zooms into the character. Storyboard Pro does also have in it the ability to work in a 3D space. Even with a 2D scene like this one, if I choose to promote the scene to 3D, then I have the option in here of actually placing these layers in 3D space. So just like I animated the position of the character layer, I can also animate the position of these background layers to give it a bit of a multiplane effect. So for example, if I move uh, the background plane further back, I could even move this tree here all the way into the foreground if I want to so that it's in front of my character. And then I can actually see the real 3D positioning in space of these layers. Now as I play through my camera move, I can double check to see now what the new camera move looks like and make sure that it still looks good. If I need to, I can go back and I can choose one of these layers and I can resize the layer in order to make it fit more appropriately in the scene. Now as I have the zoom down and then the, the pan down and zoom into the character, the scene works very well as a multiplane scene and I see the multiplane effect in the scene with the camera move. Storyboard Pro also allows you to import and work with sound files. You can import an AAF, a WAV, or an MP3 file directly into Storyboard Pro. Once you import the file in, you have the ability in here to split the sound into different sequences, to move the pieces around to make them match the panels that you're drawing with, and you even have the ability to show the volume lines so that you can click on there to create volume keyframes to have fade in and fade out effects on the volume. When editing the animatic in Storyboard Pro, you also do have the ability to change the timing of panels by simply dragging on them in the timeline. If you want to change the timing of the panels and you have sound, you can see that by default the sound does follow the movement of the panels. However, if you do want to lock a sound file in time, then you can lock it as well so that any changes in timing that you make do not affect that sound file. In addition to being able to uh, move the panels around like that, you can also slip between them by holding down the Alt key so that you don't have to make changes in timing of the entire sequence when you just want to change the timing between two elements. You do also have the ability to add a transition in Storyboard Pro. And by default it does add a cross dissolve, so as I play through these panels we see the cross dissolve happening between them. And you can also change this dissolve to an edge wipe, and the edge wipe will wipe from one edge to another, and you can define the angle of that wipe. Or you can also switch to a clock wipe, where it will do an angular wipe through that panel, and of course you can define the angle of that as well. In addition to being able to place 2D layers in a 3D space, you also have the ability to import 3D models directly into Storyboard Pro. In this scene, we have a couple of imported FBX objects. And as I rotate the camera through the scene, you can see how there are some 2D layers that are drawn in 3D space, in addition to the 3D model there that has been imported as well. Just like with a 2D drawing layer, a 3D model can also be animated over time. I can position the first frame and the last frame to make this car appear as though it's leaving the scene at the end of this panel. Storyboard Pro's new 3D workspace makes it easier than ever to adjust full 3D flying camera moves. You can make adjustments from the stage view where you can look at the scene from any angle, or you can make adjustments from the camera view where you can look from the point of view of the camera and actually make adjustments from here. One of Storyboard Pro's real advantages is the ability to work in a group. You do have the ability to take a Storyboard Pro project and to split the project into smaller projects that individuals can work on. Then when you're ready to merge the project back together again, you can either merge them sequentially or you can merge and you can replace existing scenes with their updated versions. Take advantage of advanced tools within Storyboard Pro when you're working in groups to go through the revision process. One of the things you can do is you can track changes so that when you make a change that panel is highlighted. You could also make use of the revision brush to leave changes on a specific layer that is easy to go back later and remove or hide when the person is ready to do those changes. Notice when I have the panel tracking mode on that the panel does become highlighted. 
and it also lets me quickly zoom to that panel later on when I'm ready to validate the changes that the artist has made. I can also leave a voice annotation on a panel where I can record my voice giving specific instructions to the artist and they can play it back later. In addition to this, you can also leave a special type of caption that's called the sketch caption. And when you have a sketch caption on a panel, it just gives you an additional area where you can draw specific instructions that the artist can then execute later on. Once you're ready to share your project with other people, then this is where you're going to take advantage of the export options. You can export to a variety of different formats, including the export to bitmap, which simply extracts the artwork out to bitmap images, the export to movie, which will export a QuickTime movie, and also gives you the ability to do things like to add the time code on the movie as well as the safety grids. One of the interesting export options here is the export to CSV. And the export to CSV allows you to select specific information that you then want to extract to Excel or other spreadsheet programs. If we look at some of the data that's exported to the Excel file, then we see we have the name of each scene and the name of each panel. We also have the number of frames that's in each scene and the number of frames that's in each panel. When you're working with captions, you have the um, captions laid out here as well as the content of the captions below. Also, you have a printout of each layer from each panel within your project with the layer name here associated with it. So if you name your layers according to a naming convention, then this gives you your first pass at your project management right here. If you'd like to export to a traditional format, then the export to PDF will allow you to choose from a variety of different formats that you can export to. And these formats are just preset formats that we've already set up for you, but you can also go in and set up your own format by either duplicating one of the existing formats and changing the options, or by going in there and creating a completely new one from scratch. So I'll just export a few selected scenes here from my project and show you what the exported PDF looks like. As an example, if we look at the Japanese format here, then you can see that we have on the left-hand side the different panels with the content of the panel. And then in the inside here, we have the captions with also the content of the captions. And then we see the duration over there on the right-hand side. When you have a complex camera move, you can also export several snapshots. And what a snapshot does is it just takes a look at the camera from a specific point in time. So that when you do have a complicated camera move, you can look at the in point, you can look at the out point, but you can also look at specific points along the timeline. Looking at another format here is the horizontal format. And in this case, when you do have a camera move, you can also expand the panel to make it easier to see that camera move happening. And in this case, we have the different panels on the top of the screen. And then underneath it, we have the captions with the content of the captions. At the top of each panel, we see the information about the panel, such as the scene name, the duration, the panel name, and, du and the duration of the panel. If we look at the vertical format, it's very similar in that you have the panels that are laid out now in this time in a vertical sense. And then you have the captions over there on the right-hand side. And then you have the content of each caption and the, and the information for each panel up here on the top. So the scene name, the duration of the scene, the panel, and the duration of the panel. These are just a few of the formats that we offer here, but as I said, you can also create your own custom format. The export to EDL, AF, and XML is another very exciting format. This allows you to extract the data from your timeline to Premiere, Final Cut Pro, or Avid. And what this allows you to do then is you can rebuild the track in an editing program so that you can use this as your working edit. If we take a look at an exported project, for example, in a software like Premiere, then we see on the first video track what's exported out from Storyboard Pro. So we have here the final animatic as it was done in Storyboard Pro. And then that allows you to use a second video track to lay on top of it the final animation so that you always have a working edit that has the latest animation in it. And in the case of when you need to try out a variety of different things, then you can always go in there and lay on additional video tracks as necessary to try out different options. The last export option that we'll look at today is the export for animation. In the case of when you're doing 2D animation or a 2D, 3D mixed project, then you can export to Toon Boom, and this will bring you to Toon Boom Harmony for you to continue working on your animation. 
If you're working on a 3D animated project, then you can export to FBX. And this will allow you to import the FBX file into any 3D package out there. In both cases, what it does is it exports one scene file for each scene file in your project. And the scene files will contain the original artwork on layers, and those layers will be laid out in space as they were in your Storyboard Pro project. If you have any animation on any layers, that animation will be there as well. If you have a camera move, then the camera will also be exported with camera keyframes so that you keep the camera data that you set up in your storyboard project and you can just keep on working. Also, it will include the sound. So by having basically the entire scene file as you've laid it out in Storyboard Pro, when you go into animation, you just can continue working now instead of having to redo any of the efforts that you did in the storyboarding phase. So thank you for watching this Storyboard Pro presentation, and as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to either ask your sales rep or to contact sales at toonboom.com for further information.